So with this example, I want to I want to do two different things. I don't just want to find the value of this radical. I also want us to first rewrite it as an exponential expression. So two steps. Rewrite it with an exponent. And then find the value. OK, so let's start with the first step. If I want to rewrite this radical expression using an exponent instead of a radical sign, what would it look like? The first thing that you look at in this radical expression is that Unlike our previous example, this radical expression has a little index on the outside of the radical, this number 3 that's sitting right there. And so instead of thinking about squaring, now we're thinking about multiplying something by itself three times. But what you just said was this, multiplying negative 216 by itself three times. Well, if I do that, I'm going to get a number which is, first of all, I'm going to get a number which is positive or negative. Negative. How do I know that this answer is going to be negative? Yeah, exactly. So two of these negative signs are going to kill one another and make a positive. But then I still have one left over that's sitting out and watching the other two fight to the death. <laughs> and so I'm still going to have one negative sign left out. Uh, so I know that this product is going to be negative. Um, it's also going to be a negative huge number, right? It's going to be at least as big as 200 times 200 times 200, which would be 8. Uh, 800,000 or something like that. So this is a big number. Um, and I don't think that that jives with Spencer's guess that this answer is negative 6. Ah, there we go. So getting to how to read this expression, first of all, we have to read it as a root because of this root symbol that's sitting out here, right? So it's a root, which means it's, the, it's not the power of 216, but it's the opposite of a power, negative 216. Um, and you called it the cube root. Why? What is it that makes it the cube root? First of all, how, how in your mind are you getting the number uh, the, the word cube here? Where does that come from? It comes from the 3. The index of the radical is 3. So remember, for a square root, a little bit ago we talked about the square root of 64. It was a square root because we are answering the question, what squared is equal to 64? What squared is equal to 64? And we decided that that answer was 8 because 8 squared is equal to 64. Right? So 8 was what we got for the square root. So how does this change our thinking about the cube root of negative 216? It's not that we're multiplying two six, negative 216 by itself three times. It's, in fact, the opposite. It's asking, what, when cubed, equals negative 216? That's a question mark. There we go. So it's as if I am kind of have this multiplication problem over here, right, where I have three blanks now, and all three of those blanks need to be filled in by the same number. So I'm going to ask the reverse question as I had before. If I fill in these three blanks with the same number, is that number going to be negative or positive? Negative, negative because why? What would happen if they were all positive? That's right. If all three of these were positive, then there's no way they could multiply together and give me a negative. Right? Positive times positive times positive. It's got to be positive. So we know for sure that these numbers have to be negative. Um, and then from there, we maybe do some guessing and checking. How'd you get 6, Spencer? 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6 is 36. Yeah. You can check. 6 squared is 36. And if I multiply 36 by 6, carry it 3. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 3, 216. Um, and so the cubed root of negative 216 is negative 6. 
I'm not going to necessarily tell you that you should go home and memorize a bunch of cube roots, or fourth roots, or fifth roots, or eighth roots, or, or anything. Um, but at least develop the ability to take a sensible guess and check and see whether it's correct. Right? If I didn't know what the cube root of negative 216 was, I might just start trying some numbers. Like, OK, what about negative 8? And I'll just try it. Negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8 is, well, the first pair is going to give me 64. And then 64 times negative 8 is going to give me negative 512. So now that I've done that work, was my cube root too big or was it too small? Too big, because their product, negative 512, was too far away from 0 right, than negative 216. So I should try a smaller guess. So then maybe I'll try a smaller guess like, uh, well, why is negative 5 a bad guess? Other than the fact that it doesn't work, how do I know for sure that negative 5 is not going to give me the right answer when I cube it? Does anyone see, Brittany? That's right. If I multiply a bunch of 5s together, the result is always going to be a multiple of 5. So the last digit is either going to be a 5 or it's going to be a 0. There's no way I'm going to get a 6 as my last digit. Um, and even cruder passes, so that was very precise. And even cruder passes to say, well, 5 is an odd number. So if I multiply a bunch of odd numbers together, the answer is going to be odd for sure. But negative 216, even. Uh, so there are a lot of reasons why we might rule out negative 5. Just so, so developing those little problem-solving guess and check, know how to test whether or not one of your guesses or one of your answers is correct. That's one of those portable skills uh, that's good in a lot of different contexts. What's another thing, before we come off of this example, and then we'll, we'll get some Alex open time today. Um, what's another thing about this example that makes it different from the one that we saw a little bit ago? So we just got done persuading ourselves that this was not real. And yet, this is very much real. So what's the difference? The cube root is the difference, right? So if we believe the work that we did in these last two examples, it is, in fact, possible to take the cube root of a negative number. Cube root of a negative. in fact, is real, where the square root of a negative was not. So maybe we need to modify our little mental map uh, when yeah, it comes to If the, if the root is even, while the negative is underneath, it's always a number. Yes, right, exactly. So if the index of the root is an even number, then we can't put a negative underneath the radical. And the reason for that, so let's, let's think. Can you restate that? Yeah, I'm going to restate it. I'm going to write it down, because this is, this is one that you can uh, take to the bank. Again, anytime we arrive at these general principles, um, I want to make sure to, to underline them. So I'm going to write it this way. The even index root of a negative number is not real. So before, we said square root. But that was too specific. Here's the more general principle. It's not real. So for instance, let me clear out some space here. So for instance, if I were to write down, I don't know, what is the seventh root of negative 256? And if I was also to write down, I don't know, what is the fourth root of negative 729? Between the two of these, which one is a real number and which one's not a real number? Without even carrying out the calculation. The bottom one's not real because the index is even. What is the index here? It's 4. Not real because the index is even. Um, again, if you want to persuade yourself even further, just imagine the problem as asking, how do I multiply the same number by itself four times and get negative 729? Right? Just imagine if this same number that we multiply by itself four times were positive, well, then the product would have to be positive. But if that number were negative, what would happen? 
each of these pairs of negatives would become a positive. And I have an even number of pairs. So a positive times a positive is, again, going to give me a positive answer. So anytime the index of the radical is even, putting a negative sign underneath that radical is not going to give us a real answer. But when the index is odd, it is possible. Um, any guesses to what the seventh root of negative 256 is? This is one that is going to take longer to check than most. So something which, when multiplied by itself seven times, is going to give me negative 256. Yeah, let's try two, right? Uh, well, if I have two, then two times two is four, times two is eight, <coughs> times two is 16, times two is 32, times two is 64, times two is 128. OK, so I actually wanted 128 here. I'm not going to lie. I wanted this to work out nice. Yeah. Uh, OK, so let's imagine that there was 128 there. That's my bad. Uh, OK, except that two doesn't work because it doesn't account for this negative sign. So what should I do instead? Negative. negative 2. And if I multiply seven negative signs together, then each pair of negative signs is going to give me a plus. So this first pair is going to become positive 4. This is a positive 4. This is a positive 4. But I'm going to end up with one negative that doesn't have a dance partner from over here. And so that one negative is going to survive and become part of our product. So in fact, the seventh root of negative 128 is negative 2. So negative numbers underneath the radical sign are always a problem when the index of the radical is even, but are never a problem when the index of the radical is odd. It just means, in that case, that the value of the root is negative.